in the last century, the two greatest enemies of the Jews, and frankly, the two greatest enemies of all of mankind, but they picked on the Jews, were Stalin and Hitler. They both had a deep despise for Jewish people. But for opposite reasons. Um, I don't need to tell you that Hitler was out of his mind. <laughs> what everyone wants to figure out is how the Germans went along with him. It's really, the Germans, I was just in Germany, they, they, they're guilty forever. They can't believe how stupid they were. The smartest nation in the world. The most ed educated, intelligent. But I, I, I held myself back. Iskafia. Hans Gafia. Iskafia. 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 I'd like to know what crime I'm guilty of. No, no, he said he wanted to make a political comedy. Stop. The crime is called Shimonah. I hear you, I hear you. Okay, I'm learning new things. <laughs> if you read what Hitler said and wrote, you learn the following. In his words, Hitler hated Jewish people because he made humanity weak. Because we made humanity weak, yes. Why? Because we believe in kindness. We believe in goodness. We believe in looking after the sick and the poor and the underprivileged. Hitler was the only pure evolutionist. Hitler was a strict evolutionist. The laws of evolution require the strong to kill the weak. The survival of the fittest. Yes, why? Because if the strong preserve the weak, the weak weaken the strong, and they set evolution back. Hitler taught this to school children. To school children. It was the culture, it was the philosophy. Toughness and strength and competitiveness and murder was all part of creating a super race. That's what he believed. And his religion was evolution. We've evolved, and we've gotten this far because we, without any conscience, you know, ate our way to the top, right? Why are you here when the grandpapa, the other person, not here? Because you killed him and ate his lunch. So when did we stop killing any people's lunch? The Jews. It's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> and of course, it spills over into Christianity and Islam. These are religions that ultimately are traded, traced back to the principle of one God, monotheistic religions, and they teach goodness. Goodness, what's a goodness? A person is sick, don't take his shoes, heal him. A person is weak, strengthen him. A person can't look after himself, look after him. A person dies, bury him. So in his mind, correctly, Jewish people make humanity weak. And it's a disease, it's a plague, <laughs> and we're all over the place. All true, all true. The Jewish people have existed for 4,000 years. And over this time, humanity as a family has learned what it means to look after poor people and hungry people and cold people and dead people and children. And what we don't use this word anymore, the retarded. These are basic, the Avramovino's teachings on the most elementary level that are not ours anymore. They belong to the whole world. And he identified who's the source of all this weakness of all this softness, the Jew, I got to kill him. Why? I want to create a strong man, not a weak man. I want to create a maximally evolved human being, yeah? Stalin also hated the Jews, but why? Because they're political. Because they're agitators. You can't control them. <laughs> you never know what they're going to say. You create a political order, I have a bunch of rules, and then one Jew gets up and says, I protest, this is unfair. <laughs> Think about it. So you see what's happening here? Two of the greatest anti-Semites hated Jewish people for 180 degree opposite reasons. One sees the Jew as soft, and the other sees the Jew as an agitator, as a troublemaker, uncontrollable. Stalin said this. Just like Hitler said this, the problem with the Jew is that he never, he's, an agitator, he's a troublemaker, he's a, re he's a revolutionary. He's going to come out against me and I need to be able to control my civilization. So I have to get rid of the intelligentsia, I have to get all the people likely to oppose me. Put these two together. No, no, it makes sense out of a Jew. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So the Jew's no good because he's weak and the Jew is no good because, because he's, he's an agitator. He's strong. That's right. He speaks up. That's right. And when one of these two poles becomes too dominant, 
You have a sick Jew. When a Jew becomes a bleeding heart, I'm sorry for raising politics in the cold winter of Minnesota, it's an issue. And when a Jew becomes too principled and loses his softness... In other words, the reality of a Jewish person becomes either he develops a softness which becomes a sin because it has no limit. In the name of goodness, in the name of kindness, in the name of Rachmanes, everything is allowed. Or he becomes such an agitator, such a troublemaker, that he doesn't leave anybody room. And this is really the challenge of life. The challenge of Ayid is to figure out how to incorporate into our personalities a healthy balance between the idea that Ayid is a Rahman, Ayid is compassionate, and Ayid is kind, and Ayid is forgiving, and Ayid is principled. And he stands for something. And if something is wrong, he is up and he protests. And to, to figure out that balance takes a lifetime.